Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at difference of squares. With difference of squares here, what we have is if you ever have x squared minus y squared, that'll factor into x minus y times x plus y, or likewise x plus y times x minus y. To see this here, notice if I do FOIL on this and I distribute my terms here, what do we get? Well, x times x is x squared, x times y is positive xy, negative y times x is negative yx or negative xy, and lastly, negative y times positive y is negative y squared. You'll notice these cancel, and we're left with, you guessed it, x squared minus y squared. So these are equivalent terms, and uh, by doing this, we can now have this expression factored. Now what's important to note here is the x is just a placeholder. You can have multiple terms in here. The whole idea here is it's really anything to the power of 2 minus anything else to the power of 2 will factor into this expression here. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So our first example here, let's take a look here at example 1. Uh, we have x squared minus 49. Again, you want to write these as powers of 2. Well, the base of two is already, the base of x is already written as a power of 2. 49 isn't, I, but I can do that as a power of 2, just rewriting it as 7 squared. Now I have this expressed as difference of squares. This is my x, and this is my y. So when I do this, this becomes x minus y, x plus y. Okay, let's look at example two. So same idea here, I want to be able to express this as powers of two. So this will be 3m to the power of two minus eight squared. And now again, this is my x, this is my y. So this will factor into x minus y, x plus y. Example three. Again, you want this as a power of 2, so I can rewrite this as 5p quantity squared minus 9 squared. Again, here's my x, here's my y, so this will factor into 5p minus 9, 5p plus 9. Example 4, 7a quantity squared minus 11b quantity squared. Right, 7 squared is 49, 11 squared is 121. So this is my x, and now this is my y. So this becomes x minus y, x plus y. Okay, it's okay, example 5. Now with example 5 here, I'm looking at 12. I don't know how to write 12. Like, what number do I square to give me 12? Well, I could put root 12, but that's still getting a little bit messy. So is there a GCF on this? And there is. I can factor a 3 out of this expression. And that's a main technique with factoring, is you always want to look to see whether you have a GCF. And I do have a GCF. In this case, it was 3. And now this is much easier to factor. So now I have to write this um, with powers of 2. So I would rewrite this as 2a quantity squared minus 5 squared. Well, now, like we've just been doing, this is my x and this is my y. So don't forget to write that 3 back down, and this becomes 2a minus 5 times 2a plus 5. All right, let's look at example 6. So here we have 2e quantity squared minus 15f squared. So this will factor into 2e minus 15f, 2e plus 15f. Okay, let's look at example 7. So same idea here, we want to look for a GCF. I see I can factor out, I can factor a 3 out of here, but I can also factor out a t squared. So if I factor out a 3t squared, keep in mind the operation here is division. So 75 divided by 3 is going to be 25. The s squared is unchanged, and the t squared is gone. Now we have 27 divided by 3 is 9, and we're just left with this. Now what do we have here? This becomes 3t squared times... 5s quantity squared minus 3 squared. And now, like we've been doing here, this is my x, this is my y. So this becomes 3t squared times 5s minus 3, 5s plus 3. Okay, let's look at example 8. Uh, same idea here. I'm looking for a GCF on this. And um, I can factor out a 7 out of here, and a 7b, actually. So if I factor out a 7b, 63 divided by 7 is 9, 
a squared does nothing is unchanged and that b is now taken out uh, negative 28 divided by 7 is negative 4 and the b is gone so now this becomes 7b and again i can write this as powers of 2 powers of 2 this becomes 7b and now this is my x and this is my y okay let's take a look at example 9 here so now for the first time here we have multiple expressions that represent my x like this is my base here, the x minus 2, and this is now taking the place of my y. But it still follows your formula of difference of squares. And just to remind you, x squared minus y squared is x minus y, x plus y. The x and y are just placeholders. You can replace that with box squared minus triangle squared, for instance, is box minus triangle, box plus triangle. So in this case here, if I want to... So in this case here, if I want to do this here, this is going to end up being x minus y times x plus y. I can drop the brackets on the x minus y as there's only one in front. And likewise, for the next expression, and this would be our answer for example 9. All right, let's look at example 10 here. So for example 10 here, um, again, you want to express this as a power of 2. This right here is already expressed as a power of 2. However, this 4 is not. So I have to kind of combine these together. And to combine these together, you only have to do this. Right? Now, now this expression is all expressed as a power of 2. So this is going to be my x minus my y is going to be 5z quantity squared. Notice this is now my y, and then I can go ahead and do my formulas. So this is going to be x. You just have to keep, keep track of what's your x. Well, this is the whole thing here is my x minus my y. Then it's going to be my x, so write down your x plus your y. At this point here, if you want, you can clean this up a bit. I can distribute the 2 into the binomial, distribute the 2 into the binomial, in which case here we get 4x minus 2y minus 5z times 4x minus 2y plus 5z. And this would be our answer for example 10. Okay, let's take a look at 11 here. So same idea. I want to be able to find my x and y. Well, now we're kind of lucky. This is already, this is my x and this is my y. So it's set up perfectly for difference of squares. So it's going to be x minus y. Notice, don't forget your brackets around that y value, right? And again, to help you guys out, this is my x, this is my y, and then you're going to go x plus y. And notice here, this is my x, and this is my y. So uh, now you want to clean this up a bit if you can. So we should distribute that minus sign, and that's the importance of not forgetting those brackets, right? Because I put those brackets around here, this is going to be negative 8p minus 2, whereas if you might have forgotten to distribute that minus sign, and you would have left this as a positive 2. And now this becomes 3p minus 7 plus 8p plus 2. I can just drop the brackets on this stuff here because um, there's only 1s in front. Now collecting like terms, you're going to get minus 5p minus 9 times 11p minus 5. And now we have our answer for example 11. Okay, this concludes factoring using difference of squares. Again, I encourage you guys, you can rewatch the video, pause the question, try it out yourself, and see if you get to these final answers. But I think by now you'd have a decent understanding um, of how you would go about applying your difference of squares formula. Okay, thank you.